We're so glad you guys have joined us. We are going to do a couple of quick tips to give you guys on how to work through social media. I know you hear words like share and like and comment, and most of it makes a lot of sense, but we have five really quick points that we're going to hit and kind of explain what they mean. So every time, you may not know this, but every time that you like and you share and you comment, it bumps up our church's, Calvary Church's page, our chance to be seen by your friends, your friends on Facebook, you're not even just your friends on Facebook, but the people in your community. That's how crazy things like this algorithm works. I know that sounds like all spooky and magical. But it's really straightforward. But that's, every time you like or you share something, it bumps up our chance to be seen in the algorithm. And so it it's reaches those people that you're trying to reach in your own community anyway. So why not do it like that for free? It's awesome. So we have five quick points. The first one is turn on your notifications. So what that means, of course, you can you can whether it's Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, you can turn on Instagram. Uh, you can turn on notifications. Excuse me, to where that means that you can um, you can get notified every time that the church posts something or they go live, and that way you don't miss anything. You can keep super up to date with everything going on. The second one is you can also like everything from the church. It takes half a second to use your thumb and hit that like button or use a mouse and click like. That alone makes such a huge difference. 
And the third, one of the most important is share. Share, 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 share. That little button down at the bottom right, share. You can share it to your page. A powerful thing to use on Sundays is share the live video of the services. What happens then is, like I said, it lets people that are on your friends list or in your community around where you live, it lets them see that that's what you're doing that evening or, or that morning, and it makes it be something that, man, that maybe they, wanna, they might want to check into. It's really, really cool. And you can write a couple of words on it, be like, hey, thank you guys, or hey, I love what's going on. Watch this, cr- this cool noonday prayer if you share that. It's a lot of cool stuff. But then number four is when you watch it live, comment on it, just like you would um, in, in service when, you're, when pastor's preaching or, or the worship service is happening. You can type in amen or type in hallelujah or type, man, thank you, Lord God, that is such a good message or such a good word. Thank you, pastor. Share it just like you were there live. And the fifth and final is, and the most important truly over any of these, these tactics is pray while you watch. And that's the best way to help your church grow and help your church reach others in so, on social media is to pray while you're watching these live videos. Pray that, the, that God will use the worship team and it'll speak through pastor to reach somebody, that it'll make a difference in somebody who needs it most. So those are just a couple of quick tips so you guys can know a little bit more how to use social media, how, how it works for us, why we keep saying like, share, and all that stuff. Now, hopefully that makes a little more sense then. Of course, as always, to stay up to date with everything coming up, go to the website, www.cacdenver.org. You can give online, you can watch online, do everything from there. That'll be your hub for the Calvary Online family. Enjoy these next couple of songs, and we'll hear from Pastor here in just a second.
is how I find my path. This 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 is how I find my back. This is how I find my back. This is how I find my battles. Good evening. What a day we're living in. I printed out some headlines. Not that you need to see more headlines, but I wanted to bring it into context of some Old Testament scriptures. Just two. Malachi 3.16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Don't you love that? They that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkeneth and heard it. Oh my, the Lord was listening while they were talking to each other. I wonder if the Lord needs, is able to see all of our text messages. I wonder if he's able to watch our broadcasts with us. If he could hear, if he could respond to the conversation between his people, I have a feeling he's watching right now. He's got an eye on you. He's got an eye on me. And it's a beautiful context this scripture comes out of because this, is, this was a very dark day for Israel. They that feared the Lord, they were the smaller minority for sure. And they, the Bible says a book of remembrance was written for them, for them that feared his name, that thought upon his name. I want to be a part of that remnant. I want to be a part of that group that's not the run of the mill that's not the general population I'm praying for the Lord to see something in me that is maybe something that will cause him to stop the listening and say there's something that's happening in that man's environment and how many of you would like to join me and say Lord if you're listening and you're hearing we need to speak often one to another even though we may be separated by this current stay-at-home condition. The other scripture is Isaiah, and we were looking at chapter 9, 
and the scripture says the people were sitting in darkness and they saw a great light well we are sitting in a dark day you're sitting at your home most likely most likely you're under stay-at-home condition and I just want to welcome Calvary and Calvary's family and friends those who've gathered to watch because we're not going to be long here tonight just want to thank you for watching and can I just take a minute and thank my musicians great to have Brian Teets the second company on the guitar Don Heyman the third thank you for your participation We've got a wonderful production crew joining us this evening and I want to thank you for joining us now we live in a dark time As a matter of fact this my chosen source of headlines I was looking at earlier I thought to myself my goodness social distancing going to get darker that's a headline another one says resistant resistance to stay-at-home orders remains widespread another one says New York City stores prepare for civil unrest another one says Kissinger this is his speak his writing he says pandemic alters world order DC mayor says one in seven could be infected Wow those are really dark headlines I'd have to say that that's what the media thrives on is of course when there's such fear and panic widespread I, I could I could just keep on going face coverings recommended inside coronavirus testing failure Buchanan says America may never be the same. The nation facing hunger crisis as demand for food banks soar. I, I didn't have to read all that to you because you probably already know a lot of that. But just in case, some of us may be kind of hoping that if we don't read the headlines, maybe it won't be. Well, that'd be a nice way to kind of back away from reality and just hope that maybe if we don't read about it, it's not happening. But it's really happening. And it is a scary world to be in. Can I tell you that in the middle of the darkness, there's a sweet fellowship with God's people. The darkness does not stop our fellowship. I want to thank God right now for something you might not have thanked Him for lately, and that's internet access. Can you all say praise the Lord for internet access? Praise the Lord. Isn't it great to have the ability to connect like this? They that sat in darkness have seen a great light. What great light was that? That's the New Testament dawning of the light of the world Jesus Christ coming into the world and he brings with him the light of salvation and if you're like a bunch of people in the world we're not settling for the darkness we're turning to the light we want sweet communion in the midst of the darkness and it's available to you why don't you come out of the shadows I want to invite everybody who's starting to panic and maybe start to think this thing is really going to call them pull them away it will if you let it but I'd like for us to form a resistance right now here's the resistance we're a part of what Jesus called my church he said I will build my church aren't you glad that Jesus is our church builder and right now in the middle of all that's falling apart all that is crumbling there is something that is being built in spite of it praise God the church is still alive and well I say thank God his church is not a man-made body the scripture tells us ye are the body of Christ and members in particular even though you're not together tonight in a church facility like you normally are at 630 on a Sunday night guess what we are still the body of Christ did you think the body of Christ would cease to exist because of a pandemic not on your life we are the members of his body, of his flesh and his bones. See, if the church were a man-made body, our senses and strength would fade with increasing age. So I'm proving to you right now, it's not man-made. If the church were a man-made body, we'd suffer an increased likelihood of chronic diseases. Aren't you thankful that the church remains strong and alive? And I'm not talking about necessarily physically, although God does heal and deliver physically. We spiritually are his body, and we do not grow older in the sense of a man-made body. 
If the church were a man-made body, it would eventually lose its reproductive ability. Can I just stop right now and say thank God the church is continuing to reach? Would you just reach down and click that little share button right now? Share it with all your friends. That's right, this video right now. You can literally share it. And I'd like to invite you to make, make some comments. Feel free. That's your testimony. That's your response. If the church were a man-made body, we'd age and suffer a marked decrease in flexibility. Oh, thank the Lord. We're not suffering a marked decrease in flexibility. Would you say that this whole pandemic is bringing about a brand new opportunity to show that we are a flexible body of Christ? We are not rigid and we're not stove up, as the old timers would say. We adapt to our limitations and that's what we're doing tonight as you're gathered right now watching this broadcast I'd like to ask the church that calls family their home let's decide tonight that we're not going to be in error of thinking that the body of Christ is a location or it is a man-made assembly no 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 this is not at all what the body of Christ is. The scripture tells us very clearly that an aging mind is something that needs to be continually with renewed. And the renewing of our hearts and our minds is literally our salvation. I'm so glad tonight to tell you that even though we may have challenges that are keeping us from being together, and it's already been said, we sure do miss being in our church facility. And I certainly am the first to say we miss being with you all. I hope you've enjoyed those of you who've received uh, gifts and you've needed some care packages. If you haven't received a care package and you need some help, I want you to call 303-758-5900 because your church body cares for you and wants to help. If we were the church and it were a man-made organism, we would get weaker and weaker and we would fade away. And something like this isolating of all the members would cause us to cease to exist. But can you feel something beginning to well up inside as you say, Pastor, preach it. Pastor, that's my church. I can hardly wait to get back home. And in the meantime, I'm going to worship in my home. I should have been worshiping in here all along. And I'm going to turn my home into a worship space. I'm going to turn my car into a worship space. Hey, by the way, keep your eyes open for next Sunday. Easter Sunday is going to be awesome. We're planning to gather together in the house of the Lord in our cars. No, we're not going to drive our cars into the church. We're going to drive our cars into the church parking lot, God willing, and we're going to celebrate there. Stay tuned. That's coming up for Easter. We're considering having a, a parade through the neighborhood. It's all weather dependent because we can't come inside indoors. But if you would stay tuned and know that we as God's people are not limited in our spiritual strength. The Lord is my strength tonight, and the Lord is the strength of His church. His body is being strengthened. Thank God He is our builder. We are growing in faith. We are growing in thankfulness. We are growing in joy. Can you guys join me and say joy? Joy. Woo, we're growing in joy. Everybody in that household right now watching this, would you say joy? Joy. We're growing. We're growing in our peace. Can I tell you, if we were a man-made body, we would become more and more frightened due to the dominant culture around us that seems to be changing, the world that's changing, the economy. I want to tell you, we are not victims of the world's manner of thinking. We are victorious because we are members of another society. Our world is literally another world. We are not of this world. We look up, don't we? We are not a man-made organism because a man-made church would tend to fixate on the loss that's around us. But you know what? We're fixating our hearts and minds on hope. Could I get you just to say hope? Well, thank God for hope. The organism the body, the building of Jesus Christ is being built right now. And by you simply watching and staying in touch with what's happening and reading your church emails and staying in communication one with another, would you mind if I read 
Malachi 3, 16, one more time before we dismiss. I really feel like that it would be very appropriate for me one more time to bring it to your attention. Here's the reason why. This is something that the Lord has impressed upon me that we as a church have got to get really comfortable with. If you've been isolating yourself, if you've been staying quiet, hunkered down, and no one's heard from you, neither is the Lord. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because the scripture tells us, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. We've got to stay glued to each other. We must stay glued to our pastor, pastor's team, stay glued to our church leadership, stay glued to our church information center, cacdenver.org. And most importantly, we must stay glued to the builder. He's still building. This is not a man-made building. This is a building that's made by the hands of the Lord. And we worship God tonight right along with you. Let's take this moment just lift our voices. Would you just refuse to be ashamed and reach your hands up right now with your eyes closed and pray with me, Lord Jesus, wherever we may be, we refuse to hold back our singing. We refuse to hold back our praise. And we refuse to hold back in our communication and communion one with another. Thank you for phones. Thank you for technology. Use us, Lord Jesus, to communicate one with another. Help us, I pray, to be those who learn to commune with one another, even at a distance. And Lord, most importantly, we want to commune with you. I pray for your blessing upon this entire week, Lord. Bless every day leading up until Easter. Lord, let Easter be a resounding success as your people worship you in whatever confinement they may be, knowing, Lord Jesus, that you are still large and in charge. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing among us, Lord. Even in these dark times, we're not looking around. We're looking up. Our eyes are on you. In Jesus' name, keep your people, I pray, across the city and around the world. These things we pray for your namesake and for your glory to be revealed. In Jesus' precious name, amen.